All praises to the Most High. Um, we're back online. I'm doing a personal recording, of course. Um, seems like YouTube was having some trouble. Some very bad technical connections. But I'm going to finish up the book of Esther. And this will be part four. And hopefully it will be the final part of this series of what we're studying, the courage of Esther, the star, as we commemorate the Feast of Purim. So we left off, of course, um, in verse 7. If you just follow through with the other series, uh, part 1, 2, and 3, and this is 4, then you can catch up to speed of what we have been discussing in the, the book of Esther the courage that she had to go before the queen, Salakia, the king, to save her people's lives, the Jews. And so this may be a way that I can always uh, avoid any online technical difficulties with YouTube or any other channel or platform or on social media because you can just record it and then have it uploaded. So we'll see how this works, but catching up the speed, we're now in, still in the book of Esther now, uh, chapter 7, verse 1. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther, the queen, and king, and the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of the wine, what is thy petition, Queen Esther? Now Esther, bringing up the speed, has already been uh, given information and made aware of um, Haman's conspiracy to annihilate the Jews because he was angry that Mordecai would not give him reverence uh, once he was promoted. But we just read in chapter 6 how um, Haman had to, you know, give Mordecai the uh, promotion and recognition of all of this apparel riding on the chariots, the horses, because the king had went into the, the books of the Chronicles to see what good acts someone had done to reward them. And of course, Mordecai, he found, saved his life, so he wanted to reward him with that. So Haman was very um, uh, indignant about that. And so we, we, we get down here to verse 2, and it says, And the king said unto Esther, on the second day at the banquet, because she had requested a banquet that the king and Haman come, because she has a plan. She has a plan that she has to use the streetly to save her nation. And he said, and what is thy request? It shall be performed even half of the kingdom. Then Esther the queen answered and said, if I be found favor in thy sight, if, if I, Salakia, if I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. So she's getting ready to make known to him now the plot. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. See, she's letting him know of uh, the conspiracy that, you know, he basically gave permission for, not, not really knowing that she was a Jew, because as we said earlier, her name technically means, you know, hid, uh, you know, Esther name mean being concealed, kept safe, and Mordecai telling her, don't reveal who you are as a Jew. So she said, again, verse 4, Esther chapter 7, verse 4, for we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not kind of veil the king's damage. Verse 5, then, then the king, Hahasuerus, answered and said unto Esther, the queen, Who is he, and where is he, that thus presume in his heart to do so? So he was like, Who is this person? Where is he, that he think he can do something like this? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is the wicked Haman. So she made it known who this person was that was conspiring to have her and her nation killed. And the king arising from the banquet of the wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther, the queen. 
for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Because mm -hmm. now it's known to Haman, look, the king already know what you tried to do. The king has already know that you conspired to wipe me and my nation out, me and my people out. Verse 8. Then the king returned out of the place guarded into the into the place of the banquet of wine. And Haman was falling upon the bed whereon Esther was. So this doesn't look good. The king come in and saw that Haman was falling upon the bed where Esther was. Then said the king, will he force the queen also before me in the house? See, the most high know how to set the enemy up. All we got to do is pray and be still. And sometimes that's hard because you see what the enemies are trying to do to you and your people. But she held and maintained her composure. She didn't get out of character. Neither did she use words that would just, you know, mess up the whole plan of the Most High that he's given her favor in the sight of the king to change things. He says, as the word went out, of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows, fifty cubit high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who has spoken good for the king, standing in the house, is standeth in the house of Haman. So he's letting them know Haman has already built these two gallows to, to hang Mordecai on. So they hang Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. So Haman just lost his life immediately. The Most High brought swift judgment on Haman. It wasn't even long after, you know, Esther, you know, planned this banquet and had Haman and the king to, to come that he was already destroyed. Look what it says. Then look what it says. Verse 10. So they hang Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Chapter 8, verse 1. On that day did King Hahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews, enemy unto Esther, the queen. So he gave Haman's house unto to Esther, the Jew. King Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jew. Let's read it. Verse 8, chapter 1. Salakia, chapter 8, verse 1. On that day did King Hahasuerus give the house of Haman the Jews' enemy unto Esther the queen. So he was an enemy of Esther. So the king gave his house unto Esther. Mordecai came before the king. For Esther had told what was unto her, what he was unto her. For well, Esther had told what he was unto her. So she basically told the king, this is really my uncle. Imagine everything being revealed now. Verse 2. Esther chapter 8, verse 2 now. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. So everything started going as planned. The Most High got the glory. And Esther spake again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Okay. Then the king held out the, sep the golden scepter towards Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king. So she was able to go before the king again in his presence. He held out the scepter and gave her the permission to be in his presence and said, if it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I please, and I am pleasing, and, and I be pleasing in his sight, Salakia, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of the Hamadite, Ham the Hamadite, the Agite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in the king's prophecies. Verse 6. But how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king, Ahasuerus, said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him 
they have hung upon the gallows because he laid his hand upon the Jews. You see that? Verse 8, write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you in the, in the king's name and sealed it with the king's ring for the writing which is written in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring. May no man reverse it. Then there were the king's strives call at the time in the third month, that is the month of seven, on the three and twentieth day thereof, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and the deputies and rulers and provinces which are from India to Ethiopia, a hundred and twenty and seven provinces unto the provinces according to the writing thereof and unto every people after their language and to the Jews according to their writings and according to their language. So they had get this permission to do this because the king had given this, given them this permission. And he wrote in the king Ahasuerus name and sealed it with the king's ring. Because see, the first one couldn't like be like a law, but you can write another one. And what we're going to see is that he gave permission for the Jews to basically fight for your life. And he wrote in the king Ahasuerus' name and sealed it. This is verse 10. With the king's ring and sent letters by post on horsebacks and riders and mules, camels and young uh, dromedaries, dromedaries. Because they had to hurry up and get out. He had to hurry up and get the message out. So let's go a little further here. Verse 11, wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for the, and to stand for their life and to destroy, to, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and prophecies that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoils of them for prey. Upon one day in all the prophecies of King Hahasuerus, namely upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. So he's letting them know the same month, the same day that uh, Haman had the king's decree sent out to annihilate the Jews. Okay, now here's another decree that on that day, you fight for your lives. What did it say? You stand. You stand for your life to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the powers of the people and provinces that will assault them, both little ones and women, to take the spoils of them for prey. Like, fight for your life and fight hard. Fight hard. Fight with all your might. Because these people are coming to try to kill you. Okay, verse 13. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people. And that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. Yeah, Most High had given permission for them to, to avenge themselves against their enemies. And that day is coming for us here in America. The Most High knows what he's doing. We are already fighting for our lives. That's, that's the answer that the Most High has given us. We fight spiritually by prayer and fasting. But you know, a lot of our nation, they're out there fighting physically for their lives, trying to fight. You don't let nobody take your life. Most High hasn't authorized that for all of the Jews to be killed by the enemy. So the post that, so the post that rode upon mules and camels went out before, went out, Salathia, went out being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment. And the decree was given at Shushan, the palace. Verse 15 now. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white with a great crown of gold and with garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. So they were glad because the Most High exalted Mordecai, a righteous man. And you can see through Mordecai's life that when you stand up and do the right thing and you don't bow to the enemy, you don't submit to the enemy because who they are or what they think they are or because of what position they have. You stand on the word of the Lord because we're not supposed to be bowing down to man anyway. Verse 16, the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And that is what that mur myrtle means. The the the, uh, the myrtle of, of what we just symbolize as the tree. 
that tree of that bring the the promise of the Lord that that tree that that brings the promise and restoration and establishment of the most high's covenant with his pe his people you see Verse 17, and in every promises and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many, many of the people of the land became Jews for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. So people were cleaving to the Jews because the Most High had already gave victory. That is what we're getting ready to experience in, a, in, in this world. The Most High is going to overthrow, overturn all of these decrees that have happened, that has went out and conspired against us in this government. You see the government don't never get involved with police brutality. They can call a worldwide shutdown when it comes down to this, you know, situation with this pestilence. But they can't call a worldwide, worldwide shutdown of police brutality. They just letting it go on and on because it's a conspiracy against our people, the Jews. Just let you see how we are the real Jews. Only the Jews has ever been persecuted throughout the scriptures. And, 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 and irons of yokes being put around their neck in slavery. But the Most High has always been, been with us. That's why this message is so important because this represents the Feast of Purim. The Feast of Purim of Lots where the Most High gave the victory to the Jews. Chapter 9, verse 1. Now in the 12th month, that is, the month of Adar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decrees drew near to be ex to be put in execution in that day the enemies of Jews hope to have power over them see the enemies of the Jews they hope to have power over us but see the most high has a master plan and as long as we do our part and stand up encourage our nation teach bring edification so they'll know who they are they can stand because without them knowing who they are and what scripture says and how it goes back to scriptures of standing up for ourselves and the most high raising up people to speak his word so he can get the decree out there so we can fight for our lives. This is what's coming here in America and across the world where our nations are scattered. Let's read verse chapter 9, verse 1 again. Now in the 12th month, that is, the month of the Adar, on the 13th day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution in that day, the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, thought it was turned, though it was turned to the contrary, see, it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had ruled over them that hated them. Now the Most High unchanged it. He put in rulership our nation over the haters, the enemies of the Jews. Verse 2, the Jews gathered themselves together in the cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on such as sought their hurt. Yeah, he gave permission, like you put your hand on them and you bring them down. You kill them if they try to do anything to you. And no man could withstand them for the fear of them fell upon all the people. That's the power we have as our nation. People are already scared of us. They already say they're scared of so-called black people, black men. And rightly so, because there's a power that's being reserved. They're that old line of Judah, as the scripture said, that you do not want to arouse. Verse 3, in all the rules of the provinces and the lieutenants and the deputies and officers of the king, Help the Jews. There were people that were helping the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Why? Because now Mordecai was in the place, in the position of Haman to make decisions and give out decrees. You see what I'm saying? That's how the Most High is raising up our nation. The gates of Ju Judah have languished long enough. Now the Most High is raising up who we want, men and women, in positions to of authority to make decisions, to decree and declare his words to wake up our people. That's what these decree and orders that were being written and sent out that Mordecai wrote to wake up his people. Wake up my people and tell them to fight for their lives. Fight for their lives against the enemies that is seeking to try to destroy them. 
I've given you commandment. I have the authority to tell you these things. It says, because of the fear of, of Mordecai fell upon them, fell upon the enemy. So there were people that were joining with our nation because they were afraid of us. For Mordecai was great in the, in the king's house. And his fame went out throughout all the provinces. For this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. He didn't relent. He had to stand up for his people just like Esther. What it says? His, this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater, stronger and stronger. He had rule. King Ahasuerus gave him the power. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies in stroke of the sword with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and the destruction and destruction and did what they would unto those that hated them. The Most High allowed the Jews to take down their enemies. And see, that day is coming because a lot of our nation holding back because we got to get total permission from the Lord. We're standing up in other ways. We're getting our voices. We're we walking in righteous. We're standing up. We're getting ready. We're waking up. The Valley of Dry Bones waking up. Most High is breathing breath into the Valley of Dry Bones. And once that's completed, you know, we are army. We're in the army of the Lord. There's no telling how the Most High is going to have us to fight for ourselves even more than what we're doing. Verse 6. And in Shushan, the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men. Got to get rid of them. Because the Most High said his people were not going to perish like that. Verse 7. And Parsandaratha, Parsandaratha, and Therfon, and Aspatha, and Poratha, and Adelia, and Arabia, and Parmithia, and Aurasia, and Aradia, and Vesjithra, the ten sons of Haman, the sons of the Hamathite, the enemy of the Jews slew they. They killed all of Haman's sons. The enemy. That's why people have to be careful. Haman was, you know, hung on the same gallows, but then his son was killed as well. His ten sons. But on the spoil, lay not, they laid not their hands. They didn't probably want his spoils. On that day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan, the palace, was brought before the king. And the king said unto Esther the queen, The Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the palace, and 10 of Haman's, 10 of the sons of Haman. 10 sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? So he wanted to know. Now what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. Or what is thy request further? And it shall be done. So he was down with it. He was he was with all of the slaughtering that the Jews had done in Shushan. He was he was with it because so you can, the Most High can uh, establish a righteous king, and his heart was turned right where he didn't want to see all these innocent Jews be put to death for some lie that Haman had conspired. And try to make come forth. He was a righteous king. Have to have righteous kings. There's a precept for that. You know, when 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 a righteous king is in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked king rule it, the people mourn. They mourn. Verse 13. Then, then said Esther, if it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree. And let Haman ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. So the same gallows that Haman uh, built for Mordecai, his ten sons is now going to be hung on him. And she requested that the same way the Jews fought and killed 500 people, let him do the same tomorrow. Verse 14, and the king commanded it be so. And the decree was given at Shushan and they hanged Haman's ten sons. This is how the Most High will allow your enemies to hang themselves. The same gallows 
Haman made for Mordecai, which was the righteous man, the Most High had him and his sons to hang on. Verse 15, for the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the 14th day also of the month of Adar, Adar, Adar and slew 300 men at Shushan. But on the prey, they laid not their hands. They didn't want none of their spoils. Verse 16, but the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together and stood for their lives and had rest from their enemies and slew of their foes 70 and 5,000. 70 and 5,000, but they lay not their hands on their on the prey. Verse 17, on the 13th day of the month of Adar, and on the 14th day of the same rested day, they rested on that day and made it a day of feasting and feasting and gladness. And this is where we have the, 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 the feast of pure. This is where we have the Feast of Purim because of the great victory that the Most High gave the children of Israel, gave the Jews. That's why we have the Feast of Purim. So let's, let's continue on a little further. We're closing out now, getting ready to finish up this chapter. Let's go to verse 18. But the Jews that were at Shushan, Shushan Assembled together on the 13th day thereof, and on the 14th thereof, and on the 15th day thereof, they rested and made it a day of fasting and gladness. It was the whole month. The whole month. Celebrating the Feast of Purim. Yeah. Celebrating the Feast of Purim. A day of happiness and gladness. Increase of joy. For being able to experience the miracles and the, the deliverance that the Most High gave his people from being destroyed. Let's, let's go a little further here. It, it, see, this month of Adar, of course, is, is the month of the Jews that we celebrate the Feast of Purim. Going into that month of March, you know, the latter part of, you know, February, of course, a lot of people already celebrating uh, the Feast of Purim, you know, running all the way into the month of March, corresponding with the month of March, of course. Okay, so let's go a little further here. Verse 19, we're in the book of Esther chapter 9 now. We only have, we only have uh, just, just let one more chapter, which verse 10 is only a paragraph and a half. So verse 19, therefore the Jews of the village that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the month of Adar a day of gladness and fasting and a good and a good day and of sending portions to one another. So that's what we should be doing now. Feasting, cooking, celebrating the Feast of Purim because we know the Most High is going to, he has given us great victory like no weapon form against us shall prosper. He's already demonstrated his power and his promise and purpose to the Jews. He's always done that for Israel. Our nation has always been persecuted and he's always gave us great deliverance. Verse 20, and Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in the province of, of the king Hahasuerus, both nigh and far. To, is, to establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month of Adar and the 15th day of the same yearly. Do it yearly. The king wanted to establish this among them. The king wanted to do that. Near and far. Verse 22, as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies. Yeah, you have rest from your enemies that's fighting you all the time. You have rest from those that's persecuting you all the time. Heathens. And the month which turned on in the month, the month, Salakia, which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of fasting and joy 
and of sending portions one to another gifts to the poor. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun, and as Mordecai had written unto them, because Haman, the son of the Amathai, the Amr the Zalakia, Hamathai, the Agite, the enemy of, of the Jews, had to devise against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast pure, that is, the lots to consume them and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. See, they knew the power of the Lord. Esther did her part. Mordecai did his part. And the king did his part. And they got the victory. And saved their people not just themselves. Esther didn't just save herself. She sacrificed and saved her people. Wherefore, they call these days pure, after the name of pure, pure, the, yeah, pure, lots. Therefore, all the words of this letter and, uh, and of that which they had seen concerning this matter, which had come unto them, the Jews ordained, and took upon them, and upon their seed, and upon such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their writings, and according to their appointed time every year, and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, every city, and that these days of Purim should not fail among the Jews. So this day of Purim, the Feast of Purim, should never fail among our people. It is commemorated as a reminder of God's great, Yahweh, great deliverance for us and what he would do and continue to do for our people. Yeah, should not fail from among them, from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their sea. Our children, children's children should know what this day is, the Feast of Purim. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihel, and Mordecai the Jew, wrote with all authority to confirm the second letter of Purim, and sent the letters unto the Jews to the hundreds, twentieth, and seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with the words of peace and truth, to confirm the to confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed, according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them, and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed the matters of the fastings and their cry. Yeah, basically explaining to them the matters of the fasting and their cry and why. And the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book. Chapter 10, verse 1. And King Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea and all the acts of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, where, whereunto the king advanced him. Yeah, he promoted him. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the king of Medo-Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next unto the king Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted the multitude of his brethren, seeking wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. This is a man that loved his nation. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Mordecai was a man that loved his nation. And that concludes the reading of the word of the Lord in the book of, the, of, of Esther, chapter 1 through 10. This is a great admonishment of how we ought to love our people. Not one time did we see Mordecai bagging down from delivering his people. 
And our nation was so powerful. Mordecai, as the scripture says, waxed it great and great in power. And King Hahasuerus was so fond of Mordecai. Yes, he was fond of the greatness of Mordecai. He wrote about it. He told about it. All the acts of the power of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai were written in the books of the chronicles of the king of of Media and Persia. Mordecai's name is, is spread abroad of his greatness, of, of his humbleness, of, of his sacrifice, of his boldness. He, he had a, a, a very, very great uh, uh, spirit of humility to be at the gate like that all the time. And he wasn't a man of violence. You could tell because he didn't retaliate against Haman and himself. He let the Lord work it out. Let the Most High work it out. Because he said he knew that vengeance belonged to the Lord. So Mordecai and Esther are great examples of people that stood up for our nation. Esther the queen, the star. They, they, she was the, the one that was concealed and hidden for an appointed time and raised up for an appointed time. For such a time as this. So that is a light to all of us. So we're going to end the broadcast and get this uploaded, of course. I had some technical problems with YouTube uh, going live, but this message is being pre-recorded, but you will get it and it is going to be uh, part four of the messages that has already been uploaded. Um, and we pray that you get a full understanding that you're able to comprehend the greatness of our God and that you be uh, comforted in your heart to know that the Most High is with us in these troublous and times of Jacob troubles that we are going through. And it's no secret of what we're going through. It has been made known. And the Most High has of course, reveal our enemies in waking us up. We know who they are now. So with this message, he give us strategies and understanding and help us to love our nation more. Wake up our nation and teach and edify and witness and do all we can to support our nation and love them, love our own people. And uh, we just thank the Most High for this word. Until next time, may the Most High keep you, bless you. Lift up his countenance upon you and his face shine towards you and give you peace. Shalom.